Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dan, the voice behind that Kaito Dan, and welcome back to my Ruby ship name analysis project, where I look at the inspiration behind some of the awesomely creative names that the fandom have given some Ruby ships. Sorry it's been a while since the last part of this project, but with moving to Spain and, well, Ruby Volume 4 being a thing, obviously my time was needed elsewhere. However, with Volume 4's ending, it does mean that I can carry on where I left off, Though first, a few notes. For starters, I highly recommend that you guys check out the previous parts of this project, not just to understand how I'll we'll explore each ship name, but to also catch up on any names or ships that I've already gone over, especially because I've got a lot to go over in just this video alone. And yes, before you ask, I will be doing a Volume 4 section. And once more, I'm gonna have to warn you guys that this video will contain adult themes, questionable topics, and spoilers for the main show. With all that said, let's kick off this project once more, starting with... Cinder and Salem. The Master and her Apprentice. These two twisted ladies can definitely live up to their ship name of Bitches and Witches, with their ill intentions. Cinder and Roman. The wick part of Roman's last name is also the name for the string part of a candle, and of course, Cinder can spare some fire for it, so Candlewick works as one ship name here. The other one of focus is Divorce, referring to when Roman jokes Cinder sending in Emerald and Mercury was like being sent the kids after a divorce. Cinder and Mercury. A mercury-filled thermometer is a good way to show someone's current temperature, like when they're feeling very hot or feeling like they're on fire. There's also legs for days, for those that think that Cinder has some killer legs to match Merc's actual killer legs. Cinder and Emerald Emerald's relationship with Cinder is kind of ugly with some of the sourness that Cinder dishes out, though not as ugly as the scenes around Blood Diamonds, a ship name that refers to diamonds being mined in war zones. Still for the hallucination mastermind, M would probably say that it would be sweet dreams if her supposed affection for Miss Fall is shared. Cinder and Neo. Usually heat plus ice cream equals melted, but these two could be a very affected team together, like when they were naughty nurses helping the trickery at the tournament go off without any hassle. Cinder and Adam. The Faunus will be spared becoming a burned ball so long as he stays on Cinder's good side. These two do share one thing in common though, they are quite brazen, bold but without any shame for their actions. Brazen is also the name of a Greek torture device, where the condemned are put into a hollow bronze ball and placed above a fire until they're roasted. Cinder and Junior The ship name for the pair of the sultry villainous and the big boss of one of Vale's underground club scenes is Burlesque a type of variety show that can contain some adult entertainment. Cinder and Melanie Cinder's pairing with the White Guard Malachite is Ballroom, often the scene for dancing and parties where well-dressed ladies like these two could be found at. Cinder and Militia And the name for Cinder's ship with the other Malachite sister is Moulin Rouge, a previously seen name in this project based on the French club and musical. Cinder and Ozpin. Now the Wizard and Witch pair. Volume 3 ended with a clash between the newly eternal flame charged full maiden and the man inspired by the Wizard of Oz. Cinder and Glinda. Simple enough with this first one, we've got a good witch paired up with a bad witch. Another name is based on a fun fandom idea of the fiery Miss Fool being an old acquaintance of Glinda's, perhaps even a former lover otherwise known as an old flame. Cinder and Ublek. Perhaps Cinder could be paired with the speedy historian Ublek, making some flash fire. Cinder and Port. Port boasts slaying many a fearsome beast, though I wonder if he can include any fire-breathing dragons. If the man who once trapped a piggy Borbatus tried to kill Cinder's grim dragon though, he may be burnt to a crisp like roast beef. Cinder and Winter. A true volcanic winter if these two pair up, that term being used to describe a drop in temperature due to volcanic ash erupting out. And speaking of temperature, 
There's also temperature play, a form of BDSM sexual play involving the body's temperature. Cinder and Crow Next we have Cinder with the man who once told Ozpin that the Queen has pawns, referring to Cinder being under Salem's orders. This unlikely pairing given their moral stance can also be called Firebird, for obvious reasons given Cinder's powers and Crow's name origin. Cinder and Ironwood This pair can make forest fire, thanks to James's wood portion of his last name added to Cinder's fire. Or there's Iron Maiden, the other half of his last name mixed with Cinder's new title to make the famous spiked coffin torture device. Cinder and Penny Fire and metal here makes for a capable heater, but Cinder will be noted for her virus that once made a robo-revolution when it caused Penny's fellow metallic members of the Atlas forces to turn against each other. Cinder and Cardin The bird fiend bully might have spilled some blood during some of his beatdowns, but Cinder's far worse than him when it comes to the act. Still, if together, they could either be called blood wings, given both have enough red to make the wings of a bird that bloody colour, or there's also pyrolarity, the worship of fire, fitting for a guy inspired by a holy cardinal and his most famous fiery act. Cinder and Dove If paired with the blonde of Cardin's team, they can be dubbed the often red feathered Hawk. Cinder and Sky or Cinder can be with Skylark to be Firewhirl, a tornado with a source of flame spun inside of it. Cinder and Summer Both have names that refer to seasons, so together that means we can swap Cinder's last name for Autumn, another name for the red tinted season. For something more depressing though, there's Decay in Petals, a dark themed ship name for the Full Maiden and the deceased Summer Rose. Cinder and Raven. We could call these two either Fallen Crow, as a sign of the bird monikered Huntress's fall if she fell for the vixen, or there's Dark Portals, a highlight of both ladies having similar shadowy portals appear with them at points in the show. Cinder and Amber. The former Fall Maiden and the woman who used her for target practice when seeking for her power. Cinder and Neon. Pairing these two together make the ship dubbed Apocalypse Meow, a feline twist on the name of a classic film, fitting here given the cat girl and the apocalypse that Cinder can bring. Cinder and May Miss Zedong is quite the Hawkeye when it comes to ranged fire, but Cinder is a literal hotshot. Cinder and Tuxen Tuxen was silenced by Cinder's orders, so it's only fitting that the bookstore owner's ship with Cinder is Kindling, the name of small flammable objects, like books, being used for starting fires. Cinder and the Grim Dragon If people saw Cinder's control of the dragon as something vastly different, there's the ship of Bad Dragon, the name coming from a brand of fantasy adult accessories. Roman and Emerald both of these two are fairly gifted thieves in their own right, making the ship name of Gem Thief quite fitting. Plus there's Citrine, a gemstone that can be found with a golden yellow tint. Roman and Mercury As mentioned in a previous part, Roman could be a fitting Mad Hatter from the world of Alice in Wonderland, even more so with some affecting of some Mercury poisoning, which can result in all kinds of nasty side effects. Other than that though, we have Hermes. Mercury is the Roman version of this Greek god, notable for his speed, his trickery, his winged sandals, and a cap similar to Roman's bowler hat. Roman and Neo, the deadly duo of dastardly deeds and desserts, the partners in cream, or another term for these two, gelato, ice cream done in an Italian style, fitting here given Roman and Rome Italy. Roman and Ozpin Roman's jack-o'-lantern-like emblem can work together with Ozpin's name to make a pumpkin. And speaking of something orange, the clock-like elements to Ozpin with his gears works into Torchwick's design based on a Clockwork Orange's lead character Alex to give us the film's name as another possible ship name. Roman and Glinda Mesh the pair's last names together and we get Torchwitch 
easy enough. Roman and Port. Referring to the fact that both men made betting claims in some fights in the past, this leads to their ship being dubbed Betting Men. Roman and Ublek. Dr. Bartholomew Ublek's name came from the Dr. Seuss book Bartholomew and the Ublek, the sequel sorts to the 500 hats of Bartholomew Cubbins, thus the ship name of 500 hats for the Doctor's pairing with the hat-wearing criminal. Roman and Winter. For the pairing of the member of the Atlas Military and the Ginger, we've got Agent Orange, the name of a herbicide used as herbicidal warfare during the Vietnam War. Roman and Ironwood. Both ship names of these two's parents comes from different combinations of their last names, Ironwick being one and the other being Torchwood, the latter also being the name of a spin-off to the Doctor Who series. Roman and Penny. Volume 3 had a noticeable trend of many redheads getting axed, these two being a part of that. If they ever return though, we may see some Redhead Redemption, a play on the western game Red Dead Redemption. There's also Marionette, referring to Penny's inspiration of Pinocchio being played like a literal puppet on strings by Roman's inspiration, Lampwick. Mercury and Emerald. Cinder's closest associates together brings in ship names like Jaded, referring to the jade colour via Emerald and the border motion that both often display. Beyond that, there's also Thief and the Butcher, a book name that Emerald mentioned during their snuffing out of Tuxen, that also fits well for these two, Emerald the Thief and Mercury the Butcher given his assassin skills. Mercury and Neo. Another name for an umbrella is a parasol, which can merge into the soles of Mercury's feet to make parasols, unless you want another ice cream based name. And while there's no grey flavoured flavour of ice cream, at least that I know of, you do need a silver ice cream scoop sometimes to dig into the dessert. Mercury and Adam. Mercury's aforementioned colour scheme means his pairing with the bull faunus Adam makes silver bull. Mercury and Melanie. The kicking specialists of the Malachites could make for a perfect tango partner for Mercury, since both are extremely skilled with their weaponized, pumped up kicks. Mercury and Penny. Where one is disabled due to losing his original legs, and Penny lost more than just some limbs. So these two are, I guess, the handicapped pair. Mercury and Crow. Mashing up Mercury and Crow's first names makes a different kind of spelling for the Pokemon Murkrow. Mercury and Reese. One of the most basic flip tricks in skateboarding, the kickflip, works as a well good ship name for the Extreme Huntress and the Kicking Wonder. Emerald and Ozpin. Emerald City is the green coloured home of the all powerful Wizard of Oz that Ozpin is inspired by. Emerald and Glinda. Glinda's purple colour scheme means the gemstone used for this ship name is Amethyst. Emerald and Ublek. Irish coffee returns for use once again thanks to Emerald's green colours and the often caffeinated teacher. But there's also Sonic and Knuckles, since Barty goes Sonic levels of fast sometimes and Knuckles guards the master Emerald. Emerald and Port. For Emerald's pair with the reddish coloured Port, we have the similar coloured Crochite. Emerald and Crow. And for the gemstone base ship for this pairing, we have Emerald and Crow making the dark coloured Onyx. Emerald and Neo. Emerald's pairing with her ice cream tinted ally makes Spumoni, an ice cream with pink and brown colours like Neo with some emerald green too. Though there's also the similar green coloured mint chip flavour. Emerald and Adam. Emerald and the red-headed Faunus for their pairing can be called Bornite after the dark reddish mineral. Emerald and Junior. Junior's real name is Heizhong, which has the Chinese word for black in it, so it's only right for a ship with emerald means that we get a black coloured mineral like coal. Emerald and Melanie. Melanie's angelic white attire means that she has the ship name of Moonstone with Emerald. Emerald and Cardin. Tourmaline is a mineral which, among many of its possible colourings, can include a reddish brown or an orange that is similar to that seen on Cardin. 
Emerald and Russell. The lime green mohawk on top of Mr. Thrush's dome means that we can add more green to Emerald for the ship dub Peridot. Emerald and Dove. A gate serves as the mineral used for this pairing for Emerald and the dark blonde Dove. Emerald and Sky. This ship uses the blue gemstone of Sapphire as the ship name, since Emerald's match here is of course named after the blue sky. Emerald and Penny. Penny as a robot may have some silicone in her parts, a handy material for heat resistance in machinery. Emerald and Ironwood. Amber is the ship name for these two, not the full maiden but the fossilized tree resin kind. Emerald and Arslan. Now we have Arslan's supposed inspiration of Aslan the Lion mixing up with another green mineral to give us Jade Lions. Emerald and Tuxen. M may have helped cut down the runaway Faunus, but that doesn't stop her having a ship with him. That being Tungsten. Not only does that sound similar to the Faunus's name, but it's also got a similar grey colouring to its rare metal form. Neo and Adam. Neo's name also works into a ship name with a vicious member of the White Fang, that being Neopolitics, fitting for a pairing with a revolutionary involved. Neo and Militia. A red garbed girl with the ice cream killer means that we get Raspberry Fudge. Neo and Glinda. Thanks to Glinda's crop whip, her pairing with Neo means that we get some whipped cream. Neo and Penny. Penny's machinery adds to this pair to make Cream Machine, while her name also means that we get Penny Cones, small Neo-sized ice cream. Neo and Ooblek. For the speedy teach and the sugary sweet ice cream lass, Sugar Rush is back in use for another ship name. Neo and Winter. Winter obviously brings in snow, and for this ship, she also brings in Snow Cones, the icy treat with flavoured syrup. Neo and Neon. Only one ice cream based treat could be used for the rainbow riding cat faunus and Neo, and that being Rainbow Sherbet. Neo and Ironwood. Kinda like her shit with Mercury, Ironwood's grey colour theme works best as the scoop rather than the ice cream itself. Neo and Crow. Crow does love his alcoholic beverages, Thankfully for this ship with the ice cream lady herself, there's actually a flavour that can be used, that being rum and raisins. Neo and Raven. For the mysterious lone wolf, Raven's parent with the girl she once tried to stop killing her daughter can be called ice cream antisocial, a term used for those who just want to shut out the world and just eat some ice cream. Neo and Dove. Caramel, a flavour I quite like, is the ship name for Neo's pair with the blonde boyo Dove. Neo and Shopkeep. The shopkeeper's second appearance in this project, now serving Neo at his ice cream parlour. You know he has to have one with all the jobs that he has. Adam and Ooblek. Taurine is an ingredient named after a bull and is often found in energy drinks, something that most will think Ooblek is actually drinking. The other name for these two is kind of hard to pin down, but I think I got it. Odem is an Israeli mountain, and it also means ruby, a shade of red similar to the red parts of Adam's look. The settlement in this area, among many things, includes a optics factory that makes lenses for glasses, and of course, Ublek has a pair of glasses. That's the best I can do, sue me. Adam and Port. Ford's voice actor Ryan Haywood once famously kept a pig in captivity during Achievement Hunter's Minecraft Let's Plays and named it Edgar. Fans then joked wanted to free Edgar after this, and the term is used here as the ship name for the revolutionary who fights for Faunus Kind's freedom and his pairing with the boastful teacher who we once saw trapped a piggy Borba Tusk. Adam and Ironwood. The pair of the partially metal general and the bullhorned rebel makes the ship mechanical bull, like the one you ride just to see how long you last before you hit the dirt. Adam and Cardin. Gee, the bully and the bull. Makes sense, right? Though of course I also like Gaston, the name of the egotistical hunter from Beauty and the Beast, who of course clashed with the beast over Belle, that story being Adam's character source. Adam and Raven. 
these two would make some fitting Siths in the world of Star Wars. Both are dangerous, both are clad in black, and both rocking swords with red blades. In fact, these two could be also working as Masker Blade, a sword-based pun on Masquerade, when people try to mask as someone they're not, since both of these two also have masks. Adam and Ciel. We got one clad in red and black like Shadow, and another in blue and white like Sonic. One who brings chaos with his ploys, and one who manages control of time to a schedule. Chaos and control, chaos control. Adam and the White Fang Lieutenant. The man often dubbed Bainsaw may carry a chainsaw based weapon, but the masked brute does follow Adam's chain of command. Melanie and Militia. In a lot of fandoms, they will even ship twins together, just like Orin High School Host Club's Hitachi Twins, used here for this twin based ship name as well, with another name being Eminem's, like the Sweets, thanks to both girls' initials. And that's it for this section of the project which focused on the villain ships. Come back tomorrow where I'll be going over the rest of the ships that I've got left to do that came from volumes 1, 2, and 3. Now that this video is done, be sure to share your thoughts in the comments down below, and make sure that you like and favorite the video if you wish to of course, and hit the subscribe and bell buttons to make sure that you get every single new video from yours truly as they come out. Also, follow me on Twitter at ThatKaitoDan for more on anything to do with Ruby, upcoming videos, and more. Until next time though, have a good day or good night, and peace out.